Alrighty then, hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla, and I have a fun craft for you guys to do this summer or whenever. But I had to recently make the Enchanted Rose from Beauty and the Beast because my work was doing Beauty and the Beast play. So I went ahead and made the Enchanted Rose as one of the main props. It was super easy to make and very inexpensive, and it's just overall a really fun craft to make for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and teach you how I, through a lot of Pinterest researching went ahead and made the enchanted rose. Now I ran to Michaels to show you guys exactly what aisles and what I'm looking at when I picked out my supplies. You're going to need a glass dome for your rose and this is all over by the floral florist section. And you're going to need some green wire and also some green tape to cover up the wires and anything that doesn't really match with the stem of your rose. And then this is in the same aisle in the florist section I found my lights for my rose and you can see that is it might be it's on clearance it was pricey at, but these lights will last a long time and they're really awesome quality and then I went into the craft wood section of Michaels and I started looking for the bottoms of where I'm going to put my rose now they all yeah you have these circular ones but you mainly want a circular one with a little hole that you can put your dowel rod into. That's exactly what you want. And in the same section, you can find all these beautiful gold metallic paints if you don't have any. And this is where I found my gold leaves to put on the outside of my glass dome just to give it a little bit of a mystical effect. And I went ahead and I added a little bit of glitter, mystical and prettiness and enchantedness because it's the enchanted rose. And then on the back side of the wall at Michael's, that's where I found my wooden dowels. Now you're going to have to grab your little base to your to your enchanted rose to see which dowel rod will fit in the hole in the base of your enchanted rose. And of course you're going to need essentials like paper plate, taco gun, and of course the rose. You need a rose. And some wire cutters as well. And just the basic essentials I'm hoping that you all have at home laying around in your arts and craft drawer or closet or wherever you have all your arts and craft supplies. What you want to do first is you want to measure your dowel rod, of course. Make sure it doesn't go too far up into your little glass dome. Make sure it's just tall enough and that your rose has a little bit of a clearance so that it's not suffocating and the rose isn't right up in the top. You want a little bit of difference from the top of your dome to your rose and you want to make sure that you measure your dowel rod against your rose and you want to cut your dowel rod first and then go ahead and cut your rose and just make sure just be very careful at this part because the length of the rose could really determine how good your enchanted rose looks. I went ahead and grabbed some acrylic green paint to go ahead and paint my dowel rod so it matches the stem of my rose. I'm going to take my metallic gold paint and paint the base to my enchanted rose. I love the gold paint super shiny super awesome in person and it looks really enchanted now for the gold leafing this was a little bit interesting because i've never worked with gold leafing before and there is special glue for gold leafing but i have mud podge so i wanted to go ahead and use my maji podgy i know i always pronounce it wrong but what i did was i went ahead and i grabbed my mod podge and i put it onto my paper plate and what I did is I put my gold leaves into the paper plate, left a little bit in the bag, and that way I could just go back and forth, back and forth, because Mod Podge always dries clear. So I thought that this actually did turn out awesome. The Mod Podge did turn out clear, and the gold leafing really did stand out. Um, I just thought that the, using Mod Podge was a little bit of a cheaper alternative to grabbing actual gold leafing of the uh, glue. So. I think this really turned out awesome in person. You can like grab onto it and it's really cool because it looks like there's petals on the outside just because of it's more of a 3D effect. And I do like that I made the choice to put it on the outside as opposed to the inside. I think it was a really cool thing to have it on the outside. I let the gold leafing dry for the whole night and then came back to it in the morning. And that's when I went ahead and I started 
applying my gold and red glitter to the bottom just so it kind of makes this ombre effect from glitter into the gold leafing and it kind of fades into the gold leafing like it turns out small at the bottom and it goes really big to the top. It was a fun ombre and I really like this choice because this is an onstage prop so in case I need to cover up my little box that switches my lights on and off, this could conceal the bottom very well and that way nobody, even if you're up close or from far away from the audience, they cannot see the wiring and the little box that turns my lights on and off when I apply this to the bottom. Next, I'm going to go ahead, take my hot glue, put it on my dowel rod. I would suggest getting clear hot glue um, or golden hot glue. For some reason, I couldn't get the purple hot glue out of my hot glue gun, so I just went with it. It's okay because by the time I'm done with it, I'm going to use my floral duct tape, my little floral green tape, to go ahead and wrap around the bottom. So what you want to do is you take your dowel rod and you glue that on the top, and then I also glue it on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green floral wire and I'm going to wrap my rose around my green dowel rod as tightly as possible that way I can go ahead and this is the dowel rod that is already glued into the base so I'm just putting the rose up against my dowel rod and I'm going ahead and I'm securing the rose to the rod. This may be one of the tedious jobs you're going to do on this entire project. It's just applying the lights to the rose. Now, what I wanted to do was I wanted to stuff the lights into the rose petals as much as I can. And this is, it, it felt like almost like a weird kind of spider web where, where it's going in different sections and directions and segments when it came to these little lights. I wanted to stuff the lights inside the rose petals as much as possible so it does take a lot of patience to try to get this right and get them all the way inside the rose petals to where it just doesn't look like I threw a bunch of wiring all over the top of my rose. I would really carve out a lot of time for this. It took me about 30 minutes to get this completely the way I wanted it to. And then after I added the lights, I saved very last to put my floral duct tape around the wires. That way the wires don't stick out because they are very silver, <laughs> whitish looking wires and I didn't want them to really pop out from a part of the little itty bitty lights. Now that's when I would go ahead and just save that plant tape plant tape the floral tape for the last part and cover up anything that doesn't look like a rose and as an extra precaution i went ahead and i took my leftover leaves from my original rose stem and I put the leaves on top of the little light switch for my lights. I put those on top and took a little bit of my floral tape and I wrapped the leaves as much as I could around the dial without really not messing with the mechanics of the lights. I'm just as an extra precaution. I know that the gold leafing will go ahead and cover up the bottom and the light switch box, but just in case I don't want anybody from the audience or up and close in person go, where's the light switch? This is, very, this is a good way to conceal it and I highly suggest that you go ahead and get an extra pair of leaves to go ahead and cover up the light switch box. And then I think we're ready to go and it's show ready and it's beautiful and I would just go ahead and swab a little bit of Windex around your dome. That way it's nice and clean and it's ready to be taken off to the show unless it's just like a centerpiece or if it's just around your house once again it's a fun project i hope you guys will give this a try i hope you like this quick little craft tutorial and that you'll make your own enchanted rose it's a fun thing to do and i highly suggest you do it this summer or whenever in case you do the beauty and the beast play or you're just a beauty and the beast fan i hope you guys have a most wonderful day and i will see you all later 